So I don't think we're going to play all of Sal, uh, all of, sorry, Sal's last one, all of Rook today. We could enable, oh, you could enable some mutators to start. That's interesting. We're gonna do like another 45 minutes to an hour or so, I think. And we'll, we'll take a peek. I'm not gonna do mutations with Rook to start. Let's just like play, play him through vanilla. So Rook the bog job. Let's take a peek at him and see what his story looks like. You bear the brunt of the world when you wear a soldier's uniform. So you turned yours in and left the Admiralty. But even out of uniform, your name still carries the weight of your medals. Captain Rook, the veteran, the hero, the saboteur, the spy. These days you freelance. And you're on your way to a job in Grout Bog, where the Spark Barons plumb the ruins looking for forgotten treasures. The bugs there are hard to spot, but they bleed you dry if you let them. Seems like you'll fit in just fine. Yeah, I believe this character, Rook, has a focus on negotiations more than anything so i'm gonna try i think on this run we're gonna try and talk our way through as many things as possible the land around the grout bog squelches with mud hungry for legs as well as boots the only the only road leads to a gate flanked by armed security a spark baron guard steps out the path as you approach stop right there the bog is closed especially to grifters like you Unless you pay the processing fee. Convince without paying. Forgive me for being skeptical of this fee. In fact, I'd like to speak to your supervisor. Just going full Karen, huh? Negotiations for the first... I'm going to run through the tutorial really quick. Just to make sure I fully grasp these. During negotiations... Rook is able to gamble by flipping his lucky coin. Whether it comes up heads or snails, different actions will occur, and cards can have different effects depending upon the current state of the coin. Oh, so this is different. So Rook has a, has a pusher luck kind of mechanic or a little bit of variance. You flip, flip your coin to get heads or snails. At certain points in his story, Rook will have the opportunity to trade his coin for others with different special effects. Try to find a coin that works well with the deck that you are building on a particular run. That's really neat. So I assume all the... So like, they, there's Sal and then now Rook, and there's a third character that they're working on that they have like an intro for, but they said they're going to add more characters and different ways to customize things like this. Okay, so he's going to deal four damage to one of our arguments... And then he's deploying an argument against us. Flip your coin. Apply one composure to a random friendly argument. Deal one damage. Hey, Mup. Thanks for the 15 months. Welcome back. So composure is like defense. Oh, yeah, huh? It's just a free flip the coin deal thing. Welcome back, Mup. Let's do trickery. Gain composure. Gain a bonus action next turn. Give your prepared card plus two bonus damage till end of turn. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of little details like that, like heads or snails. The the F S S H is a fish missing an eye, stuff like that. They stole our card. So, gains composure for each hostility card you draw. So, each of the different arguments they form go on this outer circle, and then you can attack their arguments directly to kind of break them down. So, we can attack this, and the extra damage that you deal tramples over. So, anything we deal past two goes to here. Snails means we always deal max damage. Sick. Shot 
for sure. Catelka. Oh, the sales of spiral. Yeah, sure. And I don't have to flip, right? So this is dealing max damage. Gain a bonus damage. Okay, so let's... We might be able to finish him this turn. Let's pleasantries here. Because I can ignore these cards, right? Okay, so then I can... I can call it to try and get tails. Let's try again. Never, never lucky, chat. Never lucky. Alright, one and three to win here. Sick. The core argument has an ability to... It's strongly advised to check the opponents because you might get unpleasantly surprised. Okay. Hits all enemy arguments, lose dominance. Discard a card, gain dominance equal to its cost. Gain one influence. All diplomacy cards deal maximum damage. A card is prepared if it's the leftmost card in your hand. Oh, okay. So if this, it depends on the draw order then. Do we want, okay, so here's the decision. We're going to try and negotiate through things. How do we want to try and sculpt our negotiation deck? Do we want... To sculpt it with hostility or sculpt it with diplomacy. I feel like our last, our Sal was super hostile. So I think, I think I'm going to try and build diplomacy on this character. Do you want to get your superiors involved? They just, they just double the fee, but fine grifter have it your way. You better have some work papers, or else the only thing I'm authorized to give you is a kick in the seat. What's going on, Maddie? Afternoon. No need for hostilities. I'm here by invitation. See for yourself. You pull the signed work visa from an oil skin wallet you carry for such purposes. Hmm, looks legit. Who exactly are you meant to report to? You're here to work security. You're here... You're here to dig. Let's do this one because it gives us blacklist. Do I look like a common laborer to you? Yep. I'm reporting to Felimo directly. Felimo, no way someone like you. Her eyes glance down at your work visa again and this time she reads the fine print. I mean, of course you are, sir. We better hurry this along. Felimo doesn't like to be kept waiting. I'm not a laborer. I have a tiny cape. I still gotta search you though. You got anything to declare? You rummage through your backpack, showing here get the contents. You've only got one thing worth declaring though. The next card, you play this turn. Draft two negotiation cards. These are battle cards. Let's draft two negotiation cards. I said I was going to decline the hostility cards, right? And a diplomacy. Heads deal max damage. Prepared gain one action. Yeah, I, I agree too. I feel like, like, when people were first coming in from, like, Slay the Spire and they were, like, trying to give me suggestions, I really think they've done a good job with both the replenish mechanic as well as um, the synergies that your different cards have, that taking cards is often the right thing. Because you want, for a game like this, you want the game theory optimal strategy to also be sweet and fun. And, like, getting more cards is sweet and fun. So, like making the game so that encouraging people to get cards the correct thing to do is a great a great design in my opinion so i'm free to go yeah whatever thank you officer it's been a pleasure don't try anything funny you go through the gate but you feel like your kit will miss you when you're gone sweet and it's a completely completely new land gosh once they get the number, the amount of content, like, on a single character, like, if they add even, like, 
they're adding at least one more character. If they add one, two, three more characters, the amount of content in this game is going to be insane. Because, like, our first run with Sal was, like, what, almost, almost four hours? And if you, you know, even if each character has, you know, half a dozen playthroughs in it. Check in with your old friend Felmo for work. Local labor leader has put out that she's looking for extra help. Well, we weren't quite playing for two when we finished. I think we I think we we played Sal for about 90 minutes today. So I think I think four is probably about correct. For our first our first Sal run. As you enter the official looking building, you are stopped by an armed guard. Stay right there and state your business, Grifter. Not just that, but you can do runbacks and choose different storylines. Oh yeah, that's true, because there's different things that like pop up only once. So like we didn't even do everything in Sal's storyline the way that like we chose to kill people instead of doing negotiations and stuff. So who can? The official sort, my good soldier, nothing to fret about. All right, I got I to gotta reorientate my mind chat because we were very violent towards the police in the last, with, with Sal, and now we're trying to play a pleasant character. You show Mikrot your, your signed papers. He somehow studies them while still fixing you with a suspicious glare. Checks out. Very well. You step inside. Felmo is easy to recognize, even though the years have been a little too kind to him. You spot him lapping at a drink like a contented salamander. I see you've gone up in the world since discharging, eh, rookie? Rook, you old scoundrel, you finally made it. Figured you'd be able to move faster than that, even with the bum leg of yours. Doc Town's a long way from here, Felmo. And that's Captain Rook to you, even if we're both retired. I'll call you your royal highness if you can get the job done. Enough fiddle-faddle, let's get to work so you can see what you're up against. So on a tier. You wouldn't have called me out here if it weren't for something interesting. I'll take the job. Excellent. If there's anyone who can get to the bottom of this, it's you. I have a couple of things that need doing. So you can see here... And again, these are how different different story trees go. That tells me this one is going to be battle focused. This one's going to be negotiation focused. So I'm going to pick the negotiation one. The Rise have been getting aggressive with their recruitment. Only some of the laborers are malcontent, but they work to sow dissent among the others, radicalizing the workforce. One pamphleter has been encouraging the workers to strike, if you can imagine. That must be a breach of contract, no? Oh, indeed. Distributing disruptive materials is strictly against the rules, but rules mean nothing to these savages. If you'd like, you can find the pamphleteer, but you can further... We can work without spark baron colors. See to it that they keep their library to themselves. But try to avoid antagonizing the laborers too much. They'll push them straight into the Rise's arms. You suddenly feel a white hot stinger in the back of your neck. Hesh, spit. You carefully probe the area with your fingers. Whatever bit you is long gone, leaving only behind the slightest smear of what it was. A cool wave of euphoria radiates into the base of your skull, clearing your mind any further of the incident. We gained a resolve. Gained twig? When this card is drawn, take one damage, unplayable. When this card is drawn, increase the cost of random card in your hand until end of turn. We we did, Manalis. Our bleed our bleed build cut right through him. It wasn't even particularly close. I come here to escape reality, and now you show me corrupt police busting unions and stifling workers. I need to be fair, when we were Sal, part of her storyline was smuggling goods in and ignoring the quarantine that was supposed to be issued on them. So, you know, there's, there's that.
You meet Kebe. Didn't think my day would involve grifter dealing. Ask. What can you tell me about this pamphlet here? Whoever they are, they're sly. I blink for one second and suddenly they're all holding leaflets. You'd have to ask the workers, but don't hurt them too bad. I've got quotas to keep. The life expectancy of the average work, average laborer in Haveria isn't long, and Vis looks twice that old. I don't suppose you've seen a rise pamphlet here. And why would I tell you if I had? Consider your options. Take names, gain one damage for each name taken, zero names. With yellow. That's it. Suspicion, diplomacy cards deal minus one damage with a minimum of one damage. Well, that's annoying. All right, call it. Man, we are really not good at flipping and flipping heads. This thing has four resolve. Has so much resolve. Alright, let's call it, see if we can get a heads. Really, really not good at getting heads, chat. Although I guess we have we have influence. We don't really need heads there, so maybe that's fine. Carry over is kinda sweet, like banks in action for us. Bone tired when destroyed, they lose six resolve. Call it. Yeah, there's the heads. Oh, I should have used trickery. Yeah, so the gameplay in this is a roguelike deck builder similar to Slay the Spire Johnson's. There's two two key differences. The first is that. Um, when you're making decisions in the story, you have a negotiation deck, which is what we were just doing there, which we were um, negotiating with the opponent. And then you have a separate battle deck for when you're attacking people. The other thing that does different is there's an actual really story-driven mode with each of the characters, where there's a lot of different trees that you can, you can go through, and there's more story behind it, as opposed to just being like a, a card game skin over a battle simulator. So it feels, feels a lot more like an actual RPG than Slay does. Surely this isn't worth the demerits. After all, what has the Rise ever done for you? Okay, keep your voice down. This marks your map. Doing this is going to get me blacklisted with some of the foremen for sure. Don't let this come back to me. Alright. You make your way through the bog forest, the spot marked on your map. You're just about to give up when you spot a ramshackle tent. Clem emerges as you approach. Who's there? Use blacklist as often as possible, okay? You lost, sir? This ain't the road. Afraid not. The barons have sent me. Yeah, people. What for? I'm not on shift yet. I need you to leave worksite A alone. And again here, we have the choice where we can convince her with our with our negotiation. Cut your losses and find the new stopping ground. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just talking to the workers there. The barons have an outlawed talking on shift. Surely there must be something else you can do for your cause.
Alright, and let's play Call It here so we can try and get a heads. And again, you can see on each of these cards they have a line under them. When the line gets all the way across, you'll get to upgrade the card at the end. Brainwash, insert one propaganda card into Rook's draw pile at the beginning of their turn. We're really not good at getting heads, chat. If you're interested in giving Grifflands a try, you can check it out on the Epic Game Store using my link here. Epic's currently running a deal where if you buy any game that's $15 or more, you get 10 bucks off, so you can pick it up for just $5. High rolls are nice. Pick a negotiation card. Spend one influence. This card gains three bonus damage for this negotiation. Sure. Let's try that. So can I, shot. I know you don't fear demerits, but the Barons are highly motivated to get Worksite A back to its quota. For now, they've asked me to talk to you, but perhaps they'll resort to less savory tactics. Yelly. You can't do much righteous, righteous rabble-rousing if you're, uh, retired. They're that peeved, huh? Good, let them crack. Others will work their way under their skin soon enough. As for you, think long and hard about your motivations. You wouldn't want to end up on the wrong side of history. Clem packs up her tent. You suspect she intends to disappear. Yeah, I think, I think my only critique of the actual, like, flavor and feel of the game is I actually really like the voice acting at the beginning and end of the characters, and I kind of wish all of the things in the middle had voice acting instead of just the gibberish. Like, the voice, the bits of voice acting that they have are feel really well done, and I wish there was more of it. Get paid. Worksite A should continue uninterrupted, though you may want to see about getting them some entertainment. I suppose there might be a laborer who might sing or tell jokes, only when they're not on shift, of course. It took some convincing, but I was able to deal with the pamphlet here discreetly. Excellent. How wonderful something could go so smoothly for you. Get my shields. Would love to restore resolve. Thanks. I have another job for you. Caught in chaos, Frash is being held for ransom. Felmo wants you to get Frash out by whatever means necessary. And again, this one is just battle. This one is battle and negotiation. So the route we're taking with this character, let's try and uh, negotiate our way through. This one requires the utmost discretion. Of course. Frankly, it's insulting. You even specify. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. The game is still currently in alpha. They're going to have a full release on Steam later this summer as well. So I guess that being something that they want to get added in. Your track record has been, shall we say, spotty of late, no? And I'm the client, so I'll set the parameters as I see fit. Indeed, carry on. There was a small upset in one of the work camps today. We sent the usual suppression force, and well, the workers may have been quelled, but the rise made off with a captive, a barren captive. Technocratic faction who retrofit technology. It'd be one thing if it was just a foreman, but you can see how this would be damaging to the brand. Make the problem go away, won't you? The extra reward because they like us. Glad to hear it, whatever it takes, old chap. You understand? Just get fresh back, but discreetly. And perhaps you ought to take one of our auto dogs with you just in case you get into a spot. It might pay to have spot on hand. Oh, and I suppose you'll want some requisition supplies. I'm afraid that's not on the table, friend. You're a contractor after all. Try the bartender over at the last stand. It's an unsavory sort of place, and it'll serve unsavory sorts like you. Otherwise, I'm sure you'll find everything you need. You're always more resourceful. A 
dusty old Kradeshi approaches you as you enter. Your Admiralty, yeah? I can read it across your shoulders. I was, once. Aerostat, if I had to guess. They can take our youth at, but they can't take our cunning. Oh, they would if they could, I'm sure. All right, well met then. Enjoy your... Do you have your squadron coin? Can I see it? Now that's quite personal. No, please, I take no offense. I'm a collector. I have several coins of my own if you're up for trade. I'm always here. I like the foot traffic. If you decide you might be up for a trade, just find me. Backs off and seems content to give you your space. If there's an angle, you can't guess it. The bar is well known in your network, quite a speak easy for folks like you that can rest away from prying eyes. If clients keep their heads down even as you come in, if they're curious enough to study your face, they're clever enough to hide it. Hello, barkeep. The name's Rook, and I'm simply parched. The bartender inspects you and nods to keep the conversation nice and low. Word was I should expect you. I don't make a habit of helping out no more than I need to. You keep that in mind. You don't suppose you provide me with information. Hebel yeah. digs around in the bar and produces a lined case of unlicensed craft. A gift, my fine friend, we've only just met. You call in good favors. Gain six max resolve. Rig guarantees the result on your next gamble. Only one outcome can be rigged at a time. All right, do we want extra resolve or do we want do we want extra or do we want rig? Rig seems sweet. We have been unlucky with our coins. I do. I do value some consistency. I mean, the thoughts on this one so far. I like it, toxic. Ended up, ended up playing for longer than they asked me to yesterday. Very useful if I want to call in favor. Seems like it has a lot of replayability and uh, I like, I like the RPG elements to it. Did we play Jundler? See, no, we only did one historic deck today, Seth. I got drinks and I got eats. If you want anything other than that, you're going to have to talk to the Son Jakes. Okay. They have a shop set up at the edge of the bog and the edge of the law for that oh matter. But they're a cagey bunch, so you might have to prove yourself worthy of their business. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Black market in the bog. Or head to the encampment. Let's check the black market. We might not have enough, uh... We might not have enough shills to do much at the moment. We only have 160. You approach the market, but armed guards steeps out of the shadow to cut you off. This is this establishment is for members only. You could turn around now and go back the way you came. Let's leave for now. Let's uh, let's let's see how we make it out of here with our resolve. I don't want to burn it all on a thing that's optional. Fortunately, it's easy enough for you to find the Rise Encampment, which means they're open to negotiations. After all, they know the bog better than you do. If they didn't want to be found, it'd have been much more of a challenge. Sure enough, you're you're not shot on sight. A Rise member approaches, weapon at hand, but not at the ready. Tukapu. What do you want, stranger? This part of the bog ain't exactly hospitable to gawkers. I've come seeking a Baron, actually. Frash, have you heard of him? Shienta. What's it to you? Doesn't seem like any of your business. Shutsona. Calandra sent me. I'm to escort Frash back to the safe house. We have a reason to suspect barons have a rescue in mind, and we need to convince them otherwise. A rescue? Barons don't usually shed blood for one of their own. You sure? All right, we got heads. So let's use this while it's dealing max. Delta. Look at there. I'm gonna hit us for four here, so I think I'd rather defend so than 
Deal some extra damage. It's my it's my storybook voice, Seth. What we what we read to the kids in. What's their what's their argument do? Insert one propaganda card into Rook's deck at the beginning of each turn. There's deck building and both dialogue and fights. Yes, J-Man Dog. And as you as you progress through the game, you often get decisions whether or not you want to bribe, discuss, or beat information out of people. It's like the the run we did with Sal before this, we basically just fought, punched our way through everything. And in this run, we're trying to build a character based around um based around discussion. Take names, deal one damage for each name taken. This deals max damage. Yeah, it's re it's really sweet. It's been what it's it's really well done. Yes, yeah, this run this run with Rook we're working for the police. Whereas with Sal, we uh we decided to kill as many of the police as possible. This gain two action, draw a card for each friend you have in the rise, zero friends. Attack, two random arguments. I believe this will hit both of these then, right? Okay, yep. Insert one propaganda card into Rook's deck. Let's finally can finish them off here. Oh, can we actually? I guess we might be short, huh? Yeah, because these are... These cost three currently. What is... What is making these cost more? Does it tell me? It doesn't, it doesn't tell me why there's a... Uh, this card will reduce your available actions by the shown amount. Their core argument. Where's... At the start of each turn, a random card in hand cost one extra action to negotiate. Okay, okay, sorry. It's the second line here. At the start of each turn, a random card in hand costs one extra action to negotiate. Got it. It's like I had, to, I had to be missing something. Gamble, flip your lucky coin. Heads gain two bonus damage. Head turner deals max damage, sure. Every core argument has a second line that either helps them or weakens you. Okay. I assume, well, yes, well, Frash is more important than we first assumed, which is why it's crucial that we keep him in pocket as a bargaining chip. That's big news. All right, then. The hidden entrance is over there. Wade points you to an inconspicuous spot in the tree line and you head inside. Whoa, what do you think you're doing in here? I'm here to pick up Frash Boss's orders. It's the first time hearing of it. Listen, they sent me to get him. That's all you need to know. I think I might need a little more than that. The start of turn, a random card in hand costs one extra action to activate. Okay. Yakopuna. How are you feeling today? Give him, give him the pleasantries. Uh, 
It says, inserts propaganda cards, yep. If I just ignore this and try and hammer them down, that's probably a mistake. Let's improvise real quick here. So I can use this to rig. Set coin to this. Two actions, okay. Ooh, head turner. This is currently doing max and it gains an extra action back, so that's nice. And then again, before I play this out, I want to play out my other card here. So this way, it, it it works towards leveling up. Because again, the more you play these cards, the more their line works across, and line works all the way across, the card levels up. While this is in your hand, apply two composure to a random argument whenever you prepare a card. Choose a card in your hand and move it to the prepared leftmost position. Mm, doesn't seem very good. Fine, take him. I just wish they would tell us things. I'm glad you understand. A comfort to see you. Tell them he's been freed. I'm glad to see you again. You never know when dealing with the rise, you know? Trust everything went smoothly? Sure did. Frash is out, no problem. I hope Auto Dog was useful, but I'm gonna take it back now. Of course, thanks for letting me borrow it. Didn't even need it. Thanks for that, really appreciate it. Frash loves us, chat. You get paid 94 shills. Let's remove a negotiation card. So, I think we're going to axe the Grumbles. And we're going to try and build around... Um, we try and build around the, uh, the Diplomacy cards. Oh, I could have gotten rid of the stem. That makes sense. Alright, I think we're going to go ahead and call it a day here. I want to get some food in me. It's about for a while. Have we leveled one of the special parasite cards? We've not. We want to see. Want to see what it does? Well, which one does? Removing this card from your deck lowers your maximum health by ten. It is destroyed and triggers a special event. Yeah, we're gonna get to it. We're gonna get to it eventually. Figure, figure it out. All right. So, uh, we'll pick up with Rook again tomorrow, I think. Hopefully, we can get through most of his run. If we don't finish his run tomorrow, I think we'll probably play a little extra and finish through it. We're not, we're not super deep into him. So, uh, at any rate, this is Grifflands again, as the game title and, uh, and command says is a, a roguelike deck building RPG game that you can pick up on the Epic Game Store. It's normally 15 bucks, but they're currently running a deal where you can get it for just five. Any game on the Epic Game Store that costs $15 more, you can get $10 discount on. I think it's through, through the middle of June. Any rate, thanks everyone for watching. As always, I'll be back tomorrow morning with some Magic Online to start the day, some Arena in the middle, and then some Grifflands to close things up at the end again. Uh, everybody stay safe wherever you're out in this world, crazy world, and enjoy the rest of your Sunday wherever you're at. Peace, folks.